Hello, YouTubers. Back to work. Let's see. I don't even know where I was. Last time I was YouTubing. Obviously, I'm working backwards. So I, I had been working backwards from the end. And then I got to this sequence that I guess started here. So they jump over the bluff. They find this cave. It's kind of like, what you going to do? Mel's like, there's trouble. And uh, he's got to go to Nippur down the river. And everybody kind of looks at TNR and she's like, I can't stay here and I can't go north. My family would. And then she realizes that she lost her pendant. Oh, man, they're going to know I lied. And, oh, well, I'm sticking with you. Mel says that's okay, but... We have to bring the the monkey, and obviously that gives him a gets him a little bit of a deadpan from Luca and Monkey. And he notices TNR is over there looking real pensive. Yeah, I mean, what do you, what are you gonna do? I'm not doing the actual dialogue exactly, obviously. Um, she says Nippur at first light, so that means they're all thrown in together. That makes everyone happy, and off we go. So. Anyway, started working backwards. The sequence that I'm working on at this point, oops, really begins here. They come to they come to the raging river and there's this log. I wonder what we have back here. Yeah, they leave the campfire area and Lucas um let's just look at this big. I think if we Oh, we can't do that. Well, yeah, we can. I gotta change a setting here. Uh, the full screen background should be white. That'll do the trick. There you go. So let's see. Follow me. What are we gonna do? I guess let's follow him. So yeah, this this shot. Uh, what's going to make this shot work is it starts out with this, the background, and then out of nowhere you see Luca and the monkey starting to come across, and then you'll see the heads of Mel and TNR pop into frame, obviously witnessing what's going on. So this is Luca coming across this log, with the others looking in the background, and he hops off and he's like, come on. <clears throat> Mel's not so sure, but he resolves to do it, so when he moves out of frame, the camera's going to come down to her. And she's gonna, she's kind of looking at what he's doing, and she determines that she's gonna do it too. Now this is the shot I'm working on right here. Um, so really, you've really got this, this shot where she's looking, and then you're gonna see him. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Going across, and that's when you'll see her go like this. And so then um, Mel is, you'll see in the shot I'm doing right now that um, in this shot that, that Mel's kind of shaky. So that's the shot we're actually going to be working on. And then these shots are actually done. Um, while he's trying to balance himself, TNR literally just whoosh, races past him. So then he's kind of feeling sick. And then he looks up there and he says, that girl is really starting to annoy me. And then it carries on with where we are at uh, before. So this is not perfect. This is probably about half done. It's, it's one of the more complicated shots, actually. It's a pretty complicated shot. Uh, one obvious problem is that the the log is not really anchored to the ground very well. And we'll fix that by giving it a little bit of foreground. And also I'm going to give it some background here. I need some tree action in the background here. And, and then it's going to need some some sort of framing devices. Probably one of the better, better um, things I came up with on this particular shot was this. By putting a glow in the background it really makes it easy to see Mel so the only reason I'm working in Krita really is that 
it, it was really more of a paint job than anything and um you know i just kind of got got going and kept going so the action at this point is looking like this and it'll probably have some tweens like when he almost whoops when he appears to almost trip like right there i'll probably have his hands kind of go like this and So that's that. Let's get the uh let's get the right brush. Yeah, let's do that. All right, and we're just going to kind of do the back and forth thing. Um it's really one of the challenges of this shot is to not um think in terms of what you know is there like uh, in other words for example when I draw his left leg obviously it's completely shrouding the shape of his right leg and I'm finding it's you know you're instinctively you want to fight that you want to make sure that you're going to be able to read the right leg so you sort of have to trust the the animation process and the viewer to get what's going on and if the if the motion is well executed, then it kind of sells sells the concept. So basically, I'm just giving a little bit more beef to his uh, forearm there. Um, actually, okay, I hit the erase button as opposed to jumping to a different brush that's an eraser so that kind of changes with my hotkeys a bit yep, that looks good so here again forearm I think I'm just going to kind of get the forearms mapped and maybe a spine 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 yep that's cool Okay, let's say torso volume. Torso volume. So a lot of times it is definitely helpful to just do one section at a time. As long as you got enough of a sketch there to know that your proportions aren't going to get out of the whack. The cardinal sin, obviously, in animation is to let your character change volume. You know, you don't want your character to appear to be... That you don't want their weight to appear to be changing, so like right there, Mel's a little too skinny. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so now he's got no arm here, so let's get the arm. <laughs> I do find this motion. Oops, okay, that was a glitch. I find this motion quite humorous. Okay. Cool. Alright, let's get this arm. And then we'll we'll deal with the variations in volume here in a minute. Probably with maybe a different brush, because this one seems a little hard to control. Like obviously right there is the volume is not right. Did I switch to erase mode? Yes, I did. Okay. Could could be argued that the... Um, let's just do this. That's what I'm used to doing is just switching to the eraser, eraser that way. and Keeps my hotkeys close together because the slash key is right next to the key that you use to toggle between keyframes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get the legs in straight. Let's get chicken legs in there. Then we'll we'll deal with making them look like they have the right volume, like I said. Okay, give the boys some calves. Don't want 
didn't get them too beefy calves, but I want to at least have an indication of the the muscle mass. That's obviously a little too beefy again. Hit the wrong high key there. Well, it happens. I I tried Kita, Kita. <laughs> That's our dog name. I tried Krita, 4.3 again and regretted it again well their whole thing was to improve stability and I'm not saying they didn't uh, actually the thing that made me go ahead and try it was the fact that the flood fill tool appeared to be faster by a noticeable margin so I'm like, well, maybe there's some other things that have improved, but it's um, the degree to which it completely destroys your configuration was unacceptable. It messed up so much stuff, messed up my hotkeys. They changed some of the default hotkeys in ways that just seemed, I'm sorry, utterly brain dead to me. And... Uh, so I'm like, okay, I keep hitting the wrong key. That's the eraser. Well, this requires a bit of subtle uh, brush work. Maybe I should zoom in. Yeah, that would be nice. Actually, what's actual size? I'm going to go closer than actual size so I really see the how stupid it's looking so that I can really correct things. Then I know when I shrink it back down it'll be it'll look better. So yeah, major disappointment on Creta 4.3. Uh, but it's not like it hasn't happened before. I've tried it like three or four times now. Every time I'm I'm like, why do I even bother? So, again, I, I know I'm kind of giving Mel probably a little bit more, <clears throat> like, muscle volume here than he really has. But, mm, and we'll see. I may trim it back, but I'm basically trying to sell the, sell the motion here, you know. He's a skinny guy, but he's not a scrawny guy. Let's put it that way. Sometimes that helps. Just you draw something you know is not right, and then you chisel it back out like that. <clears throat> Let's just keep rocking. Okay, so these shots are okay. Just need a little bit of tightening up here and there. And unfortunately couple of these are copies of the other frame, so meaning I'm going to have to do the corrections more than once, or I could copy the frames, I suppose. Let's do that. That would be the more commonsensical thing to do. So that's there. That's there. <coughs> Actually, that one's not quite right yet. Okay. Yeah, I think... Oops. I think that's the only one that's repeating. Savey, savey, savey. It's not perfect. But we're letting it unfold. Organically, as they say. Oh yeah, that one. I guess I kind of missed that one, didn't I? Looks a bit ridiculous. I'm going to actually.
actually just resize that. Oops. Okay. Don't want the eraser. Do want the eraser. Now, obviously, you know, he's in motion, so it's we do have a little bit of latitude on the anatomy. You'll see when this plays back that it definitely sells the somewhat comedic uh, nature of his motion. Okay. All right, let's save it. I think I was already at actual speed. Okay, the second key, right there. Yeah, holy cow. Major disaster. And actually, this is, well, it's what can happen. I mean, you, you sort of slap out these keys to to get a feel. And poor guy's got no deltoids in that picture. Give that boy some deltoids. Okay. One thing I can do, by the way, too, is the silhouette doesn't have to be fully opaque. It may all sew together better if he's actually slightly transparent. Yeah, we'll see. Save, save, save. Regenerating cache. That's usually when when Krita blows up, that's when it blows up, typically, when it's regenerating the cache. Okay, yeah, and I'm not, like with this shot, I'm not satisfied with the background. I'm basically reasonably satisfied with the water effect. I mean, it is kind of a background effect, and I don't think, I think your attention is going to be on Mel, so you're not going to really pick apart how cheese ball the, that effect is. But let's keep going. I want to say, um, right there. Okay, let's do this. I don't normally, for this show, I'm not doing, I'm doing almost nothing on twos. But in this case, I will make an exception. Basically, if it's a special effect, I'll make an exception. And it could be that it actually would be better on on ones. Okay, and I'm gonna take this particular shot and try to tighten it up a little bit. Um I must say that that pop-up thing is not my favorite feature of Krita. I've never used it once, ever. Okay, so now let's see what that did. I think it's going to be probably kind of funny. Let's find out. Okay. So, kind of yeah, kind of no. Um, what if we... So we're going from this to this. I say we run this twice. And I'm going to speculate that if we put a few keys in the center on ones. Nope. Oh boy, that did not work. Nope. We just want to stick with twos. Okay. And I would say, 
we need a transitional one here so I'm gonna see if I'm, I'm putting that on on twos again so okay and then I'm gonna take his whole body and slip it back a bit mmm Okay, I, I actually need a transition from this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna really fiddle with this. I'm gonna take some chances here, and of course I can always just delete the key if it doesn't really work. Yep, it worked. <laughs> yeah, that works. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I like the randomness of that. Say, I mean, this is a money shot. We might as well milk it. Yeah, and then it'll cut to TNR. Um, okay, I do feel like on his first pose here, um, he's really just a little too big. Let's make him slightly shorter there. Mm. That guy. Probably a bit tall. That one, just a smidgen. Okay. Um, let's just take that key out. I, I tell you, I actually think I'm going to rethink this because... Obviously, the the overall thing with this show is keep stuff on threes. Let's just see how it feels if we just stick with threes. What I don't want to do is use ones and twos to... Yeah, I like that better. I don't want to use ones and twos to um, try to smooth things out. I don't want to get into that sort of tweening thing. Okay, my basic issue at this point, I'm going to redo this. Oops, wrong one. Yep, undo, undo. I want to take this. Sorry, that's not what I meant to do. I wanted to kill those keyframes. Okay, so now what I want to do here is a little different than what I had. I want to grab this. And first, rotate a little bit. Since that went left, I'll let me this go. And I guess we'll just try to keep this whole trend consistent by that up there okay so now I can just go like this and loop it just to see what it looks like I like that better B oops loop it and I again I should be saving my work Okay, now what I'm going to do is take his whole body weight. Let's keep playing with it. Okay, well, yeah, but if you're going to do that, then... Okay, first of all, I'm dyslexic, so... Okay, his body went left, and so that would actually suggest that this hand would go down. Yeah, let's do it that way. Just trying to find a a nice sweet spot 
that doesn't look too bad but kind of sort of works okay and frankly okay okay except I don't like it I don't like it I've actually wrecked it I've wrecked it I'm gonna go back to what I had before hopefully Kita or Krita has enough undo Krita does not have enough undo what are the odds? It's pretty typical, actually. I've I've had that happen many times where Krita has just enough undo to not allow me to get back to what I had before. So... Let me just check. Okay, yeah, so that's that. Hmm. Alright. I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna do a double double thing here. I'm actually gonna take this one. And I'm not gonna worry ab at ab at all about um patching it, making it look, uh, I'll go back and patch it afterwards. Okay, first of all, let's look at this one. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. And, you know, after fiddling with it here for a bit, I'm seeing that if the, whoops, if the animation is, if there's very much, it actually kind of wrecks it. That's not too bad. Okay, save that. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so now I need to patch the patch the holes, obviously. Patch the holes. Patch the holes. You really ought to patch the holes. Ba 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 Okay, so I don't mind using the twos in some cases to get me as a transition like this I mean obviously his foot's slipping which is kind of ridiculous but yet it's not um, it would actually make sense would actually make sense I think is if he if he slipped a little bit but it's really not on the screen long enough to I'm gonna do one more thing yep I'm gonna do one more thing here oops I just want to see how this looks. If there's a a bit of a crazy frame in between. Like so. And I guess probably we should erase that foot and put it down like that. I just want to see what that does. Whoa! Okay.
So this this poses obviously the problem mainly because it's just the other one having slid around a bit so what I'm going to do is insert a new key there and just turn on onion skinning let's just do a good old fashioned tween on threes I'm just going to I'm going to go crazy with it here and see just see how it feels I think this actually might work yeah um obviously that didn't <laughs> work <laughs> i'm i'm really because i'm moving so fast here to try to sort of get the the result to see what's going to work i'm kind of getting a little sloppy but in this case so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take these out but this is all going to go by really fast Like I said, if it's a special effect, I don't mind breaking my rule a little bit here and there. Okay, so we got up and down. So let's get rid of that one, and I'm going to go ahead and leave two in there. This one's got to go. Yeah. Let's turn that onion skinning off. Boy, I don't like onion skins. Only when I really, really need them just to be able to see. Well, obviously, that's <laughs> what onion skins are for. <laughs> see? You see? <laughs> that was it! <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that gave me exactly what I was looking for. Excellent. 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 <laughs> Man, you know when it's working, don't you? You know when it's working. <laughs> it actually makes me laugh every time I see it. That is that is way too funny. Okay. Okay. Let's save our work and then now I need, I have so many layers here on this one. Okay, so there's the log. So what I need is actually a layer in front of the log. And let's use our classic painterly brush. And let's just get a little bit of action here around the brush. Or <laughs> around the brush. <laughs> I am using a brush. <laughs> to sort of give the a sense of, you know, kind of just locking in there. the position in space of the uh, log. Okay, that actually helps. Um, now, under the log, I'm still going to put a bit more shadowing. Okay. And is that the log right there that I'm seeing? What the heck is that? Is that this? Oh, that's this. Oh, yeah, that's got to go. Oh, my gosh. Mm, that's a holdover from when I did the perspective tool on the... Uh, on the log, because the, it, it, it didn't look like the perspective was really exaggerated enough. Okay, so... Log. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay, that actually looks okay. Now, let's just add a little bit of noise here. 
That actually helped a lot. Um, let's go to... Let's see what happens if we put a little bit of... Let's steal let's steal a page from the jungle book because there's a there's a quintessential shot in the jungle book that was just like that where all they did was put a put a couple of, it was a shot of Begira. And I'm gonna do I'm just gonna I'm gonna actually take this to a disgusting extreme. Just because and it's true, there is supposed to be a famine going on, so it's not like they should uh actually I don't want to do that. There's a famine going on, so it's it's they there shouldn't be a lot of foliage. Okay. Alright, let's go to the for or the background. Yeah, there it is. And Okay. Whoops. One that's what I wanted to get rid of actually is trying to make it um make the landscape recede into the background and we need some really dark I, I don't mind a little bit of well okay that didn't work a little bit of greenery um this is too doggone bright it's catching too much of the moon like this it almost this foliage looks too happy you can't have happy foliage in this shot. This guy's are on the run. I'm actually getting, what's actually happening here is my eyes are being fooled by the, um, <clears throat> they're being fooled by the colors. It's kind of amazing how that works. You, uh, you acclimate to color very quickly and so as a result you can be thinking you've got a tone that's the right one and then you realize you're not even close. Okay. Yeah, this I like. Little bit of color in the foreground is okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I keep sampling the color and nothing's happening, so. Hello? That's bizarre. That was bizarre. I thought, you know, I'm sitting here lecturing my YouTube users, or subscribers, about how color will fool you, and in fact, the color hadn't fooled me. It was that Krita wasn't sampling the color. Crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Like right there. I wonder if it's actually sampling. Okay, and that's definitely problematic. Um, let's go back to the sky here. Um, really, dude? You might want to use the correct brush. Okay, stop. Stop everything. This is ridiculous. Boom. Okay. Okay, so background. What is this? Oh, that's the mountain thing. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is chisel back away from this. Chisel, chisel, chisel. Chisel, chisel, chisel. I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be. Is that the foreground? No. Oh, it's part of the sky layer. Oh my goodness. That is embarrassing. Well, that's because 
of the way this all kind of cobbled together in the first place is a bit of a bit of a kludge. All right, save our work. You know, it isn't bad. I think the background. This mountain layer, I should really label this, shouldn't I? They're not the most convincing mountains I've ever done, but... Um, that actually helps. And... I think that should be fairly faint in the background. Obviously, we haven't even, we haven't fiddled with the uh, with the sky yet, really. So what I want to do is I want to add a second layer here on the sky. And what I'm going to do is I just want to do kind of a tree thing. Okay. Sort of a kind of a tree thing. A tree line, you might say. Seeding off in the distance. Why? You know what? No particular reason. Other than it just feels like it needs something in there. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my eraser. Chisel back into it, because that's... That's a little too much. And then what happens if we get more aggressive here in the far background? Is if there's some more rocky stuff back here? Actually, I think suggesting rocky stuff makes more sense. Excuse me. So, this one. I'm going to chisel that back out. So now I, I really want to have a bit of a change in orientation here, if we can. It doesn't really work. Um, it's a compositional... Um, kind of a convert, compositional gaff here on my part, really. So I'm going to go ahead and just have a little fun with it and see if it works. Let's go like that. And then paint back into it. I'm trying to... I'm just trying to suggest some kind of background here that is arguably in front of the mountains. Uh, that actually works okay. It does suggest that something similar on this side would be useful. So let's just keep running with it. Because the idea is that these guys, you know, they just came out of the woods. And it's not like, you know, I mean, there were some woods. <laughs> okay, so... that they came out of and I better go to full size here because I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead I've been meaning to do this let's go to textures let's find that that Krita um, I can't remember that's definitely not it although that's a step in a better direction than what I was doing, uh, no doubt about that. Let's push back this way a little bit. That's interesting. But it's not the texture I was looking for. There's, there's one of these that's actually... Yep, there it is. That's the one. Okay. Let's put it in erase mode and 
I chisel back out of this. Okay, that is actually working, kind of, sort of. Alright, back out of eraser mode. I, I really haven't used the... Um, you know, these animated... Whoops. Animated and texture brushes in Krita have not been part of my toolkit. So now what I'm going to do is pull something down in front of... So we sort of have a dual. See, that worked. That was what we needed. We needed a dual level kind of background. And frankly, gosh, you know what it needs? Um, watch this. I'm going to sew the whole bloody thing together. Look at that. That did it. That's what we needed. Dang, that is crazy how that works. It just sews the composition together. You know, guys, I am not an expert at composition. Not at all. I do not consider it to be my great strength. And so when I can kind of sort of get something kind of sort of right. Well, it's been fun lately because I've actually been finding myself able to um, create stuff that at least to me, actually looks cool, whereas in the past I would have been probably a lot more challenged, <laughs> let's say. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's got like no contrast in it, and then you look at it, you actually look at it, and you realize it's got tons of contrast in it. That's bad, 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 bad. But I will say I'm impressed with the foliage brush. That is a gorgeous... That's probably the first time I've used any kind of animated brush in Krita where, I, other than the, the cloud one's pretty good too, I guess, come to think of it. But yeah, that is a really nice foliage brush. Uh, what I don't like, okay, I guess we'll just go into erase mode, chisel back into this. But yeah, I mean, Holy cow, let's save our work. This is one of those scenarios where it'd be so easy to just kind of get stoked and <clears throat> and forget to save. Okay, so let's do some clouds, baby. We'll just put them on top. Uh, clouds. And we'll even, we'll even indulge the... Uh, the cloud brush. I'm looking for the cloud brush. Where's the cloud brush? No. It's probably up here. I Yes, I think that's it. Nope, that's not it. It's that one. Okay. <clears throat> Boy, that took a long time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go fully white. Okay. And I'm going to put in a couple clouds. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into erase mode, turn my opacity way down, and chisel some shadows out of these clouds. Then I'm going to take the whole layer and stretch it, because I actually think the cloud... Um, you know what? You know what else I'm going to do? Yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and animate this. I can't believe I'm feeling myself saying I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it. You watch what's going to happen. 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. We'll deal with opacity here in a minute. I just want a little bit of motion. Very little. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's going to cost me a couple minutes to try it. Now I'm not moving the clouds on threes. As you can probably see, I'm moving the clouds on fours. And I shouldn't be. But to do something like this is the one thing in the shot that probably would have been better handled in open tunes. You know, let open tunes do all the 
keyframe. Oops, that was too much of a move. Let's undo that one. But it is fun sometimes to try. Just see if you can do it. It does give a little sparkle of life, and frankly, I've thought about having some birds flying by in the background. Only because when I was working on that anime, I had a really good <laughs> animation I did of flying birds. And so I'm like, you know, I should like put that little flying bird in everything I ever do. Just as kind of a little gag. Okay. Can you believe I just animated those clouds by hand? And now we turn them down and ease them in. Let's just see what happens. It might suck. It might be awful. Oh, it's not great. It's definitely not great. Yeah, it's a little distracting. not bad. It's actually an example, a really good example of why doing it in OpenTunes would make more sense. If I had done it in OpenTunes, not only would I have only had to set two keyframes, and OpenTunes would have calculated all the in-betweens for me, but more significantly, if I decided afterwards, which I did, that I really would prefer another cloud, it would have been, um, you just add another cloud to the drawing and everything else would just update, so... In Krita, you can't do that because the drawings are actually baked into the keyframes, so to speak. Let me see if this is even going to be useful. I actually think it's not, but I'm willing to try. I'm going to go in overlay mode just to give it a little bit of variety in color. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer, but this one isn't going to be in additive mode. like so and if I really want these to look correct I should actually merge them together as a merge layer um actually I don't think that worked that did not work but let's see what it looks like what the heck that actually looks better <laughs> well there's a creedism for you that's something that's very, uh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff Krita does. So, we might be belaboring the clouds for sure. I'm going to turn that layer off. And let's just see how it feels with just the one. Yeah, I mean, all your attention is going to be on Mel anyway, so that's that. Okay, so the only other thing I want in the foreground, me thinks, would be um, would be, hold on. I got to label these because I'm starting to lose my lose my uh, pers perspective? No. River, sky glow, foreground. That's it right there. Tree lines. Okay. B key. Um, I guess I could just use any old brush. It doesn't really matter. I just need to Okay. Okay, it's the background. It's actually the background. Yes, the background has a glitch. I'm going to put this brush in erase mode. Z. Okay. Just now. I went to erase a little bit out of the background. And, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this. See what happens. Okay, stop. That was not right. I need opacity up. Okay, that actually looks shockingly good. Um, I'm going to go with that. There are times when you... There are times when you just go with it. Okay. Um, the issue that you guys are kind of seeing me struggle with a bit here is the fact that it appears to me that the way Krita samples colors um, sort of takes into a sort of takes into account um, I'm trying to stop get out of erase mode takes into account the blending modes of the, the layers which generally I should think would be a good thing that'd be kind of desirable but it's leading to some pretty unpredictable results when I go to sample colors so in the tree lines I want to go really unsaturated get this okay now I need my I, I literally, when I look at the icons, I just don't have them memorized. Just, ugh, that's not it. I just don't remember which one is the tree one. And the icons are so freaking tiny that I have to literally do this. Where is the foliage one? Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> All right, pull out a bit. Okay, so the problem with a shot like this where you have so much layering going on is that, like right now, there's, a, there's this mark right here and I literally don't know what layer that mark is on and I'm a little freaked out because when I turn this off I see it in what appears to be the sky layer but it can't be the sky layer because the sky layer is underneath the tree lines so unfortunately it's in the mountains it's or no it's in the foreground layer I'm sorry background who boy Okay, let's see if this is an appropriate strategy. I think it probably will be. I want to make that pretty small, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this in here to get that, um, and then I'm going to I'm going to chisel back into this like that. Yeah, I mean, this is actual size is that right there, so I've definitely got some latitude. And I want that a little darker. That looks really nice. I guess I'll probably be using that brush once in a while. And let's turn the opacity down so we can sort of ease it in a little bit better. I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually get some shadowing on the kind of like the this foliage would cast a shadow, right? And indeed it would. Okay, what about this? Why do this? Well actually trying to 
deliberately gray out the ground a little bit. Okay, I went too far. I want to actually turn that opacity down even more. So you have to... That, that didn't work at all, obviously. Okay, keeping in mind that Luca is going to be standing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I want to just see what this does. I'm going to put my opacity at 2%. Just want to see what this does. Okay. Whoops. Just go 5? Okay. Okay, that's interesting. It doesn't work though. It just muddies the waters. See, that's a great example where a really simple, bold brush stroke like this one is is best. Keep it clean. Yep, I think we're in good shape. Now, the tree... I'm sorry, not the tree, the log. Shadow. Looks utterly stupid. Okay. So, the problem is that the shadow... There... I don't know, I think I'm going to get the shadow right on this end. About like that. And then I'm just going to take this out. It looks stupid. Yep. That shadow, you would not see that shadow. And there's enough shadowing underneath the... Um, underneath in the foliage in the, the line on the bluff, to, I think, to sell it. So what seems to be missing to me at this point, what seems to be wrong still, is that my my shot is not really being framed in as well as it should be. So I'm going to just call this gradient. And what do I mean by that? Well, never underestimate the power of a plain old, um, oops, what do you call that? Okay, not too bad. Let's put it in overlay mode and see if it works better. Eh, it really isn't going to make any difference since it's, since it's black. It doesn't have any chrominicity to it, so, addition. Well, wait a minute. Let's put it at 50%. Normal? Yeah, it makes no difference. Okay, so what I was kind of trying to say here is I think I want to go like this and then fine-tune the, uh, the curve here. Really? Okay, that's interesting. Normally when you... <laughs> okay, man, whatever. <laughs> Normally when you do a curse adjustment on a gradient, it tightens up the contrast of the gradient. So what the heck that was, I don't really know. <laughs> okay. So now, question. Let's duplicate that layer. And now let's do this. Let's do a filter, adjust, hue saturation. Let's do a colorize. Crank the saturation and the lightness up. Okay. Put the lightness about halfway-ish. 
All right, now let's just let's just float this around here for a minute. over here not blue that's for sure oops that's not what I meant to do I meant to rotate the color yeah blue doesn't work green sorta works but what f seems like it's making the most sense to me is kinda the Kind of the chromonicity of the the rockiness. And that's obviously not much of a change at all. That's interesting. I'm going to go with that. I just am trying to smush a little bit of color into that gradient. And I think what I'm going to do is go like that, but then I'm going to erase back into it. Let's hit the erase and just take it out up here. Take it out. Take it out. Come on, come on, as my friend Donio used to say. Okay. That feels pretty good. There is one thing missing. I just realized. Um, we got the clouds. Let's call this moon glow let's use this again let's go white and what we'll do is we'll go like this and we'll shrink it down we'll go like this okay <clears throat> and we'll try that also in overlay mode ooh that doesn't work at all so it's going to be just normal I would say yeah I don't really dink around with tons of blending modes there that feels pretty good I'm saving my work and we're still under a gigabyte though <clears throat> let's see how it feels we still have to get Luca in there though that's pretty impressive actually how long does this take an hour It's not horrible. It's not great either. Okay, what's not great? Um, what is this, by the way? Uh, okay, I'm gonna call this. Oh my gosh, foreground touch-up. Well, this is why I don't have very many shots that are this complex. You know, because it gets to be a real management nightmare. But if you're going to get the look, you know, kind of kind of got to do what you got to do. So, what is this layer? Oh, okay. This is the rear tree line. So, what's missing? Nope, the mountains right here. That's what's wrong. Those mountains look stupid. Okay, so that's not good. I hit the... I hit the free transform tool and the mountains disappear. Okay, well, I guess we'll just take a risk and see if we can guess. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I guessed pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Now, are those mountains a little too bright? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Got the Raging River. Okay, should we keep going? I say we keep going. Let's, as long as we're going to have 800 trillion different um, layers, I say we just keep going forever. So let's say River Spray. Okay, we're going to go with a texture brush. B key. Let's make it white. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go, um, well, I'm going to insert a key. And I'm just going to go randomly here. Um, here. Insert a key. Okay, did this one have both? I hope not. Nope. Good. And I'm going to actually put two fairly close together here. So if they're going to build, then... Actually, that's kind of a good idea. Let's let's go with... Something like that. Insert. I have no idea how this is going to work, by the way. I'm just trying to give the sense that randomly you're getting some spray. We'll do a three in a row on this one, just for fun. Whoops. Um, get rid of it. Insert a fresh key. Insert another fresh key. Okay, I, I have absolutely no idea if that's going to look good or not a clue. I am completely flying blind here. But let's just see what happens. Okay, that doesn't work at all because they stay on the screen too long. Okay, obviously, duh. Here's what we need to do. Let's go ahead and get rid of them. Like that. <clears throat> And then we'll find out what what we might find out is that that they kind of need to stay on the screen for uh, a frame or two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, actually that worked. Um, I'm gonna turn it down. Turn down the opacity a bit. And let's just see what happens if the last frame is allowed to stay on the screen for two frames. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's really a great effect anyway. So we'll just kind of we'll leave it in there. <coughs> River spray. What is? What else is missing? Luca. We've got to have a Luca. So, this will be our last layer. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a regular run-of-the-mill brush like this. And draw a silhouette of Luca. Okay. Um, so he's actually over here, 
and I'm just I'm giving absolutely uh, come to think of it his I remember his garment had a green like an olive green tint to it which is kind of not good considering the background that we have behind him <laughs> but that's all right The idea is that Luca is leaning forward, kind of with his hands on the the uh, the log. So I know this looks a little silly. It looks actually a lot silly, but that's okay. There's a method to the madness. All right, let's see. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if it really plays, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. You know, it's just a... Uh, I'm going to put his foot actually behind him, so um, let's just switch to the the quintessential eraser. Um, hello? I'm not bothering with proper ink and paint just because I, I don't I don't think it's required. I I could be wrong, but <sighs> let's actually go back to this. Whoops. You know, and this is one of those things that, you know, maybe we'll find out it didn't work. You know, sometimes you gotta just take a chance. Sometimes you just gotta take a chance. Okay, so actual size, that's what we're talking about right there. So the truth of the matter is, what we should do is put in a little shadow action. And then we'll just take this guy and Do a blur brush. And I think that worked. What is that? Hour 19. This is one of the most complicated shots. Just for kicks and giggles, I'll pull up the, the other shot I did that literally took 20 minutes. That probably has almost as much entertainment value, actually. It's pretty crazy. Ah, 
Ah, it's working. Um, 779D. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> this one. 768 768 this one was funny and this this one I, I couldn't believe how long it I mean it was so quick to do ready <laughs> I find it funny he's, he's like so struggling and she just pew, zips across pretty funny at least I think it's funny uh, I'm not going to save that. This one probably should save it. We'll watch it one more time. And as you guys know, as you guys know, there will be more later. Where's the stop button? I'm losing track of my mouse. Okay, now I'm leaving. <laughs>